Yes, The Rock cut the promo of the year on SmackDown. Yes, the NXT feud of the year already and Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams finally got announced for a match. But this week, I need to talk about something different, okay? This week, a travesty has occurred and one that needs to be rectified. On Monday Night Raw, we had a gauntlet match where, and the winner got a chance to face the reign of 600 plus days, the IC champ, Gunther, and somebody was robbed. We're gonna talk about it. For those who do not know what a, a gauntlet match is, it is a certain number of superstars, usually about six, and two start in like a traditional one-on-one -on -one match. When a pinfall or submission occurs, one bounces, another superstar comes down, and then they start like a one-on-one -on -one match. And you keep going until all, all competitors are announced. I mean, all competitors come out, and last man standing wins. And this particular, again, this particular gauntlet match, winner got shot at the IC title held by Gunther. And it was a great match, absolutely great match. You know, starting off was Ricochet and JD McDonough, who, if you don't know who JD McDonough is, he's usually like the, the punching bag for Judgment Day, the group he's in. But this first match, he got a chance to shine. He got a chance to wrestle. Him and Ricochet put on several minutes of a great match. And it was awesome to see, you know, see him get his. And then the rest of the gauntlet match went as a standard, you know, either a quick fall or, uh, um, you know, heel losing and then taking it out on the face they lost to. I love Big Bronson Reed who lost and then made uh, Sammy pay for it. You know, standard, whatever, gauntlet. And then the final two come down. It's Sammy Zayn and Chad Gable. Two fan favorites, two absolute fan favorites that came down to those two. And, you know, had you told me this is how it's going to go a couple months ago, cool. Everyone would be fine with either one winning. It's, it's great. But not right now. You know, WWE was trying to get two, you know, uh, feel uh, good people in there. So no matter who wins, the fans are happy and they get the match. But still. The wrong man won. The match ended with Sami Zayn reversing Chad Gable's ankle lock into the one, two, three. So now, as of right now, it would be Gunther versus Sami Zayn for inter Intercontinental title at this year's WrestleMania. Again, if you would have told me a couple months ago that that was the direction, cool. Everybody loves Sami, Gunther's a, a great heel. Boom, bomb, shaboom, Sammy could end the streak. Or not the streak, the title reign. But right now, the wrong man won. It should have been Gable. Yes, you know, Sammy is a star. Yes, you know, he's coming off last year's main event. He main evented night one for the tag titles in a fantastic match and culmination of that story from last year. Yes, he has the star power to take down Gunther, and it makes sense. But dang it. It's about the story. Wrestling is about the story. And there's no better story in this match than Chad Gable. As if you don't uh, know, if you're just getting into wrestling, in the late summer, fall of last year, I'm not sure exactly the time, Gable and Gunther put on a series of matches that were fantastic. And the whole story there was Gable trying to capture a singles title to prove not only to himself, but his fans, his family, that he could be, you know, the singles guy, that he could be the single star. And he came up so close, so close. And, you know, that match ended. You saw, like, he had his family there. You saw his his uh, two girls, I believe, crying, going through laughing like a jackass, you know, making fun of that. And, you know, it was just, the story came to Gable just... Again, being close, 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 but not getting it done. If you would have told me then that was it, you know, he got we got Gable on the platform, but didn't give him a title. Cool, fine. But, uh, get him back in the title uh, tag title contention with Otis Alpha Academy. Uh, let him have some fun. But leading up to this gauntlet match in the past couple of weeks, Chad Gable has been putting on some banger vignettes on either on social on TV. Talking about, you know, he needs his re uh, redemption. He needs a, a win in front of his children after seeing them, seeing them cry last year. 
talking about this is his shot at his time his focus is out of control like in a good way and just like that and it, it got the fans reeled in it got me reeled in. I was like oh man yes Gable can be the one to take down Gunther at WrestleMania Gable can be the one to be a star out of this and we got so close on that we got to the final pinfall and a gauntlet to have that ripped away from us again Sammy's awesome I love Sammy he is a star he did not need to win this match. You could have put him anywhere else in this card and it would have made sense. Gable needed this. If you want to build a new star for your brand, it could have been Gable. Gable should have been the one to win the gauntlet match on Raw. And damn it, he should be the one to take down Gunther at WrestleMania. Again, based on you know Gable's shoulders like being off the mat, that's an easy way in for Gable to make as a triple threat. And if we get Gable on a triple threat with uh, Zayn and Gunther, you know, Constellation Prize, fine. Even if uh, Gable wins, cool, great. But the story should have uh, read as Gable won. Gable gets that last one-on-one -on -one chance on the grandest stage of them all versus the ring general versus the supervillain Gunther to finally take him down. Prove to his family he's good. Prove to the universe he's good and all that stuff. And that one, two, three would have hit like crack. Okay. It would have hit like cocaine in Miami. It would have been awesome. But no. Give it to, they gave it to Zane. They gave it to the already established star. Just to make, I don't know, this WrestleMania bigger than it was. It didn't need that. It has the rock already. Okay. It has Logan Paul already. Didn't need that. But Again, they can write the ship by throwing Gable in there, making a triple threat as a consolation prize. But they shouldn't have had to write the ship if they would just done the right thing the first time. Gable should have won. Gable was robbed. And justice for Gable. He deserves his moment. This is his shot. This is his time. Okay? Gable is your next IC champ. He deserves to be a Sami Zayn, you son of a bitch. I like you. But you're a son of a bitch. And that's all I got to say about that. Because I don't know till we watch. All right. Moving on to <laughs> after that rant. <laughs> moving on to the week that was. Um, uh, Drew opened the show. Talking about Seth. Talking about like, how Seth, you know, need he, the reason he's in the Bloodline Cody uh, storyline. Because he needs the attention. And... You know, what what's going on between all the bloodline and all that is, is near Drew nor Seth's business. Seth, uh, you know, uh, says, no, Drew, you do have some of my attention. You know, it's not all that. He calls CM Punk a, he calls Drew, it's like CM Punk because he calls, he's a hypocrite. And he says, Drew's looking to be an honorary bloodline member. Seth says night one, he takes out the bloodline. And night two, the last thing Drew uh, will hear at WrestleMania is one, two, three, and still, and Seth's musical playing. Uh, Seth all ends it with the reason, you know, hasn't paid much, to, uh, paid much attention to Drew. It's because he doesn't need to. And after that, Drew walks away. They're doing a good job, even though this is like the secondary feud for Seth right now, which is weird because it, it's his world title. They're doing a good job of like, keeping that in the uh, back of uh, Seth's mind. Hey, you need to start paying attention to Drew. And as the weeks go on leading towards Mania, I assume Drew's gonna get, you know, more physical, start whooping his ass more. So, there, it's, it's, it's kind of a slow build. Again, taking a backseat to The Rock, which it's The Rock and the Bloodline, of course, gonna take a backseat, but still, Drew's being like, hey, you keep, you know, putting me down a pestle, I'll remind you, you know, of who I am. And yeah, that, that it's been a good build. I'm happy Drew's getting his, uh, his shine and this build. He's been player hater of the year. So I'm curious. I'm looking forward to what happens next. Uh, Jay Uso comes out later on the show and officially challenges his brother Jimmy Uso to a match at Mania to, you know, get back for all the times Jimmy has cost Jay matches over the past year, whether it's for, you know, the tribal combat for the a world title, the tag titles, and now the IC title like a month ago. Jay finally wants to get back on that. And like there was a, this, this a, would have been a throwaway match, but the way it ended has to be talked about. Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae versus Maxine Dupree and Ivy Nile. And as Maxine's about to hit 
the caterpillar i don't i don't know if she calls it some her variation something different candace just like stops her in her tracks say no don't do that that's stupid there's a reason why the internet's talking about you you suck that women's locker room thinks you suck and your your brother is lucky he's dead otherwise he he otherwise he had to be like no be, have to watch this crap and it's something it's if you can find it on X or somewhere on YouTube, go look it up. Candace LeRae talking down Maxine Dupree. It was brutal. And Maxine like tries to run off mid-match. <clears throat> Eats a boot by Indy Hartwell. And Indy and Candace get the win. So this is a heel turn by Candace. And pseudo heel turn by Indy. I'm all for it. That was cold. That was vicious. But it was good. I mean, it was good. More Becky, uh, Becky and Liv had a match. It... You know, it, Becky won. That was a good match. They showed respect afterwards. Rhea comes out saying, you know, the, re, uh, the reason why Becky's picking all these fights before Mania is because, you know, Becky has an excuse when she loses. Becky was like, um, you know, a seed of doubt was planted early on. Early on, like before War Rumble, she can uh, beat uh, Rhea Ripley. And Be uh, but Becky says, you know, people believe... Uh, believe in her she's good when people doubt her she's great if it ends up being becky versus the world the world does not stand a chance and what was cool about that is i think the way they're going to build it uh with becky taking more of like the healer side and Rhea getting cheer wherever to go expect the double turn at mania i'll talk about that more in my uh mania uh predictions but the way they're building it look for one of them to go evil and one of them to go good. But after that, Becky and Liv meet backstage, shake hands. Nia jumps in and just demolishes both of them, sends Becky through a table. A little after that, Becky challenges Nia Jax for this coming week's Raw, last woman standing. So that was awesome. And um, <clears throat> talked about the gauntlet match already. Uh, no more I want to say about that. But... So, uh, throughout the show, uh, Michael Cole, Cody Rhodes had an interview. Cody said it felt good slapping Rock the Friday before this uh, Raw. Cody said he can trust Rollins. People change. Cody uh, had said his story is no longer but just about him. It's about his family, including his mom, because you know he can't win the title, hand it to his dad. He has to give it to his mom. And you know, Cody says that you know, based on what Roman said at last year's Mania about the story being the third ending. Cody said no, we're in the, the final ending. And Cody says Cole will be able to say on the, after night two, winner, WWE champ Cody Rose, and he finished his story. It, it was uh, midway through the, the promo, Cody almost came to tears. It was a good babyface promo. It's still weird that Roman and Rock do not come on Raw, despite Cody and Seth going to SmackDown a lot. I think before this... Before we get to Mania, they that needs to reverse. I think Roman and Rock need to come on Raw. But with their schedules, who knows? Moving on to NXT, uh, LWO beat uh, Out the Mud. Now that is important because LWO advances to a triple threat match later on. Like some like in the next couple weeks where the winner, like a triple threat tag match. The winner of that gets a shot at the NXT titles. Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker at Stay and Deliver. So we're finally getting some direction as to what the tag team titles are doing. Roxanne Perez came out and she says that a uh, sweet and innocent Roxanne is no more. You know, a year ago she collapsed after a match and never got her one-on-one. -on -one. And then when she got a one-on-one -on -one, late, late, late down the line, because everybody's worried about Tiffany Stratton and Becky Lynch, uh, Lola Vice had to come ruin it. And now that she took out uh, Larry Vaquero last week, she wants uh, the title award to, awarded to her. Uh, the GM Ava came out and says, you know, Roxanne, you, you shouldn't do that. And as Ava was talking, Tana Paxley, which was Larry Valkyrie's stalker friend, came out of the crowd and, and attacked Roxanne before the ref stepped in. And that promo could have been cut by like five minutes. She was rambling. And I give her, I, I applaud her for trying to do the long promo, but, but not everyone can do the long promo and hold a crowd in the palm of their hands. Uh, that, again, that could have been cut by five minutes. Uh, she kind of repeat herself a little bit, pulling uh, Dwayne Johnson. But whatever, it, it moved the story forward, and we're going to get Lyra and Roxanne presumably at Stand and Deliver. So, so Tony D'Angelo is facing Aila 
Ela Dragunov for the NXT title at Stay and Deliver. And, you know, Tony D'Angelo's the Don, the whole Italian mob gimmick. They're showing that they're one of the restaurants eating. Ilya just shows up and sits down. Ilya said, no matter what Don does, Ilya's to Urantain, which prompts the Don's people, Lu uh, Luca Crucifino, and I think I'm saying that right, and Ch uh, Chains Lorenzo. Take Ilya, put him in the back of a car, drive near a bridge, and just give you know Ilya a warning saying, you know, watch out. And then they force Ilya to drive his ass back to the arena. So, mob shit. <laughs> Got highlight the boy. Sean Spears won. Beat Rich Holland. Uh, I hope that feud does not continue, but it probably will. I'm ready for Sean Spears to move on bigger, better things because I'm a fan. One of the funniest things I have seen in NXT, but like ever, um, it was a match between Gigi Dolan and Ariana Grace. And if Ariana won, the Gigi had to be under the tutelage of NXT's pageant queen, beauty queen, whatever her gimmick is. And so the match, we're the match getting low. It's getting to the end. And Ari Ariana Grace distracts the ref. Hits a low blow on Gigi, which funny in itself. But Gigi returns the uh, favor and like right in front of ref just goes like full force. Boom. Right on Ariana Grace and her face. Look so a women's low blow to end the match is something I've never seen before. It's probably been done before, but I thought that was hilarious. Um, and then the show ends with Trick Williams coming out to talk about, you know, Carmel Hayes challenges to a match, says, you know, he feels betrayed by uh, Mello. He had Mello's back for two for two years because they were brothers. And, you know, when he originally thought Mello was happy, you know, Trick was getting, finally getting his chance to shine. Turns out he wasn't. And, you know, Mello, uh, Trick said he should listen when everybody said Mello was, you know, shade him and not be happy for him. He didn't listen, gangs, he thought they were brothers. Uh, Mello lied about not attacking Trick when he actually did. And Trick you know, told Mello, yeah, we're not on the same level. I'm above you, all that kind of stuff. Which for some reason uh, brought out metaphor. The group and Noam Dar is like, Trick, you deserve to get beat up. And you know, you went home after you got attacked at Vengeance Day and just cried about it. Noam says he, he's, he was there to steal Trick's, uh, Trick's hype. And says they have a match next week. Uh, Trick starts whooping up on Noam Dar and or or Mensa. Then he grabs Lash Legend, a, wom a woman of the group, and just full on plants a kiss. Then he sends Metaphor home, and that's how the show ends. A little weird, I'm not gonna lie. That was kind of out of nowhere, but it's Trick. It worked. It made sense. He got he's got that swag. Noam Dar Trick is gonna be a great match, and I look I I, I assume Carmelo's gonna. Be show his face all right moving on to smackdown the last show of the week uh the rock opened up the show with um one his interest music converting midway into like his hollywood rock theme from 2003 which is awesome so if you were had any questions about him being a heel he is he also had a rock concert which he hasn't had in a minute it was great he had uh the help of i think i heard the names right yellow P uh pete uh, which is uh, they were in Memphis and that's a Memphis uh, local not local Memphis from Memphis artist and there's a group called War and Treaty who I've heard of and their guitarist was out there too he's he, you know, he sung his usual taking care of Cody Rose Seth Rollins he made fun of Cody Crybabies he threw a shot about Ja Morant and you know his gun troubles in there too which was great the coolest part which is why again I say this is already in running for promo of the year after um after the concert, he gets real serious and he says, oh, you know, Cody, he, he replayed it. It's a slap from last week when Cody slapped him. He replayed Monday where Cody's, you know, crying about his mom and the rock's like, you know, you, uh, you, you, had the, <clears throat> you had the moment of your career and then you follow up by crying. So he, he addresses, the rock addresses uh, Cody's mom, Michelle Rubio, I think. I think it's the last name. Say, hey, Michelle, you know, your son's not going to be able to hand you a belt. And then a rock pulls out one of his weight belts. He's like, I'm going to take this weight belt, make sure it's covered with Cody's flesh and blood after I beat him with it. And then, you know, he says, the last thing I'm going to say to you, Michelle, is what can I say except you're welcome? 
what can I say except you're welcome? You know, like in a, a Maui tone. And then he ends the promo with, if you smell what the final boss is cooking, <laughs> whether you like him or you hate him, there are a few that could do it better on a mic than a rock. And that was great. It wasn't overly long too. It was probably 20 something minutes, maybe at most 30, but he put on a concert. He talked about Memphis because that's where he got his uh, start from. And then he, he like went from happy rock to like serious. I'm gonna whoop uh, Cody's ass and hand the blood to his mom. Awesome. LA Knight and AJ Styles becomes official with LA Knight challenging uh, LA, AJ Styles to match Mania. AJ Styles runs out of back in like a cartoon way, smacks him with a chair and accepts. Jimmy uh, accepted Jay's Uso. Jay Uso's challenge for WrestleMania. So there, and there was like a couple of matches. Uh, so uh, back on Raw, it was uh, it was announced that Judgment Day will will defend our title in a six man uh, six six team ladder match for the, the uh, title. So basically, if you don't know, the titles hanging over ring. There's gonna be six separate teams in that match, all vying for a shot. So how's uh, SmackDown's doing it? Is they're doing two because they they are gonna have two teams. And Raw will have three teams, I believe. That's how they're doing it. <laughs> so SmackDown's doing two separate tournament like brackets, and the winner of the first bracket, winner of the second bracket, will be in. And the new Catch Republic of Ta which is Tyler Bay and Pete Dunn, and uh, Legato de, uh, de Fantasma, which is Umberto and Angel. I don't know if he goes by Angel Garza anymore. They advance, so the winner of those those two teams, I, I guess next week, week after that, will go on to the uh, the ladder match at Mania. Um, Nick Aldis announced that Logan Paul will defend his U.S. title against Kevin Owens and Ray New Warren in a triple threat in the main event. Uh, it, Bailey versus Dakota Kai. Bailey trying to get her revenge on the group that she formed that kicked her out. Match ends the DQ. Rest of the damage control hops in. Naomi tries to make the save, but gets her ass whooped for her troubles as the number game numbers game proves to be too much. And you know, it's a four on one, four on two, four on one, with EO hitting a, a moonsault on Bailey's face to end the show with damage control standing tall. Let's talk about what's gonna happen this week. So really on Raw at the time of the show, the only things that were announced was Raw, the tag match for the the ladder match for the tag titles. Who the Raw side is gonna get determined with their qualifying matches. I think they're just doing tag on tag, tag on tag, uh, three tag uh, tag matches, winner of those are in. And obviously Becky Lynch versus Nia Jax and last woman standing. That match is going to hit. Nia Jax has done, has proven without a shadow of doubt she can wrestle in the second run. Becky is obviously Becky. I, hopefully they give them like the last 30 minutes just do a great match, no interference or nothing. And look for Becky to win because she's the one that has a marquee match of Mania. But we'll see. As far as the qualifiers, I forgot who's in what. I it shows you how much you should care. Uh, next week um, for NXT, uh, Tatum Paxley takes on Roxanne Perez. So that match is probably going. Uh, it's gonna be fun. Roxanne's probably gonna win, but that match is gonna be fun. Tatum is a can low key work so. Uh, the other two matches for that triple threat I was talking about for the NXT titles that stand to see who can challenge for NXT titles that stand deliver happen. The OC uh, versus whoever the hell Hank Walker and Tink Ledger are. Axie and Nathan Frazier versus two members of the No Quarter, no quarter Catch crew. Riley Osborne takes on a third member of the No Quarter Catch crew for the Heritage Cup next week. So I can tell you to care, but uh, next week on SmackDown. The second bracket for the uh, the other sh spot for the tag, it's a lot of tag shit going on right now. So bracket two for the other slot for SmackDown for the ladder match at WrestleMania is AOP versus Street Profits, which is going to be hard hitting. I I don't expect a clean finish. Probably AOP winning. Uh, and the OC, which gives us another shot at tag tile for some reason. And Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. We'll see. Um, Rey Mysterio is back in action, taking on Santos Escobar. And Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes come face to face, which leads me to believe that The Rock's not there next week and Seth Rollins probably is there. So 
a, we'll probably see a promo between those two, which it's not the worst. But yeah, uh, as far as anything else going on, I back to my rant from before, I do expect, hopefully it's at least addressed about Gable's shoulders uh, being off the mat and him needing to be added to the, the IC title match. If they don't do that, that's just lazy. And if they don't do that, then why even have the camera that way there? I, I don't know, I expect, I'm, I expect it to be a triple threat, something. Uh, as far as like Drew and Seth, uh, I think Drew's going late, especially uh, if Seth's not advertised for SmackDown. I expect Drew to lay hands on Seth again to like remind him, oh, you need to pay attention to me. I'm Scottish Spa. Jimmy and Jay, uh, I expect some sort of maybe, not face to face necessarily, but one to be on the other show to kind of talk trash. Maybe Jay on SmackDown this week. I don't think Roman Reigns and Cody Rose throw hands, but you never know. We'll see. Because I can sit here and talk about it, but in order to know, you got to watch it. All right, that's it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know what you think is going to happen next week in the comments below. Um, but for now, I'll say bye. Please like and subscribe. It helps me out. I'll catch you guys in the next uh, video. But if you want the last video, click somewhere on the screen. I don't know exactly where, but just click it. Cool. I'm Heartfelt. Peace.